So if you've clicked on this video and you made it this far, you're probably interested in wedding videos or maybe how they're conducted, shot, filmed. I don't know. But today's video, we're going to cover three kind of focal points and uh, things that as someone that shoots and edits wedding videos, these are kind of these staples that I think if you can hone in on these, you can really start to get a good product. Now, that's going to be audio, visuals, and editing itself. Now, I'm going to start off with audio because while visuals are going to be number one and you definitely can make a video just with visuals, I find that audio is probably the thing, the icing on the cake, that can really take your video to the next level. Editing is going to be extremely important, but audio is just something when it comes to wedding videos, it just takes it to the next level. So, we kind of hopped up here, and we've seen Katie and Brian's intro segment here. Now, for a little visual representation or what the heck we shot this entire wedding with, Panasonic GH5, uh, I want to say two of them, Panasonic GH4, and two Panasonic S5s. Now, small disclaimer, the S5s were really only used for the ceremony, so all the footage that you're going to be seeing basically was shot on the Panasonic GH5 with a combination of this setup right here, Panasonic GH5, 24 to 105, Metis Bone Speed Booster. Obviously, I've got a monitor up here, powering the monitor by that, and we've got some Movo audio. So that's pretty much the handheld setup, and then also occasionally using the beefy 70 to 200, really for more of shots where I really need to get crazy tight, but are environments where I can't actually get close to my subject. Only other lens that was really used that much is really going to be my Meki 12mm T 2.1. And that's more going to be for shots where pretty much just trying to get super wide. Now that we've kind of gotten that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about why audio is so important. And I probably need to show you some examples before we dive any deeper. <laughs> There are so many things to say and be thankful for. The opportunities you gave me, the lessons you taught me, and the examples you set as husband and wife, as parents, and as people. Everything you both have done for me has allowed me, pushed me, and formed me to be the man I am today. Hey, hey. Proud of you. We're proud of your accomplishments. We love you. And congratulations on a great ride. Thank you. Okay, so when we come out of our intro, we start the video off with the bride getting ready. Now, she's interacting with her family members. We've got some nice music underlying, and we also have some onboard audio that we have from some of our clips that's pretty much in the edit underlying there. So our sound design is giving people a little bit of like an understanding of the environment that you're kind of watching. Now, that being said, whether it be the family laughing, whether it be, you know, you hear them hugging, you hear the photographer's camera clicking, it really just sucks you in and gives your audience really a little bit more of a taste than just visuals. So that's why we're starting with audio first, because when you pair up audio with the visuals, to me, and obviously we could get better audio, but in a nutshell, in these run and gun situations, having yourselves an onboard mic, Lower those levels a little bit on the input going into your camera. That way you have some flexibility in post. And then you've got something for some sound design to lay underneath your production. Okay, so then after that, here's where audio gets taken to even in the next level. And that's going to be on this first look. Brian, I love you. I love being loved by you. And I look forward to loving you for all of the days to come. Katie, I want to stand with you on a mountain. I want to bathe with you in the sea. And I vow to continue to recite lyrics to random songs until the sky falls down on me. <laughs> <laughs> that vows for me. I vow to be your partner through life's ups and downs. And I promise there will be many. <laughs> I vow to support you through any endeavor you take on and be your biggest cheerleader for the successes you undoubtedly will achieve. I vow to be patient with you as you are with me. 
Now Never. we're outside, so of course we're trying to capture the rain, everything like that. You're really trying to drive home the emotions and the scenery that's actually going on here. Now one of the thing we'd have is a VO playing underneath everything that you're seeing. And this really is going to tell the story of these two, this couple coming together, their experience, and then visuals on top of that audio when it comes to the first look and it really just comes to the overall video, it's just going to knock it out of the park. When you have them talking about their love and confessing everything and then you see the first look and you see the true love and you see them out in the rain and all this and the smiles, that combination is just a wicked formula for success. So I can't tell you time and time again, audio is going to be so key. And when it came to actually capturing ceremony audio, there's going to be a couple of things that I want to remind you guys of. I typically like to run with the Zoom Box Old Faithful H4. Uh, what is it? The yeah, Zoom H4N um, gives me some XLR inputs. Also, if you get in a super pickle, you're just going to have your traditional headphone. Uh, so, like, let's say you don't have like this XLR input, you would just take this into your headphone jack or whatnot, and then you can still get some really good audio out of this. Now this recording device just gives me flexibility and more control over the actual input, whether it be a lavalier mic, which, side note, we're currently recording, got a lavalier on here, going into the Zoom H4, so that gives you guys a taste of what kind of audio you can get out of this situation, hooked up with the Movo audio. Now, we've got the lavalier, and you're like, okay, well, what are you doing with the lavalier? My go-to kind of setup is, if I have two lavaliers, which I do, uh, and maybe you don't yourself, you only have one, I typically like to put the mic on the groom. Now the reason being is because that gives me the ability of getting good groom audio, talking to the bride, and then the bride talking at the groom. Now obviously I would love to hide the mic, but to get better audio, typically we just clip it to the groom's jacket, and that gives us the ability of groom standing there, let's say the mic was here, he can then talk Boom, he's talking to his soon-to-be wife. His soon-to-be wife is talking to him, capturing audio, and even the pastor or whoever's doing it can boom, talk this way, and you're just getting audio from everywhere. Side note, you want to make sure you're monitoring that audio because typically when the bride and the person that's going to be doing the actual ceremony, you're going to probably have to bring up their levels a little bit just because groom's audio is going to be the loudest. Everyone else is going to be a little bit of a boost. Now, other things you can do, if you have two, the only other option would be you're really going to always need to stay away from putting a microphone on the bride. The white plus the microphone just never seems to work unless you were really talented and could maybe hide the mic here, but that's going to be a little like annoying for the bride herself. So really, let's just go ahead and make sure you either have it on the groom or you have it on whoever is actually going to be hosting or doing the reading of the ceremony. Now, as far as visuals go, because we do need to spend some time on it, you know, it's going to be one of those things, I'm a Panasonic shooter, it wouldn't matter if I had Sony's or I had Canon's. I do think the final product would probably be pretty similar. The only disadvantage with these cameras is going to be some low light situations. Like I said, we had the S5, so we broke those out. But if you do not have a low light camera, that's going to be okay. Get yourself a little bit of a faster piece of glass and just own the lower light situations. Grade it so it's friendly, it looks good, and to be honest with you, most people that are going to be watching wedding videos, they do not do this for a living. You're going to deliver something better than they would ever do. So it's really just gauging an interest or understanding what your client's paying for. If you're charging thousands of dollars, you better figure out your low light situation. If you're not charging over like a thousand bucks, you know, a little grain here and there is going to be okay. The only thing I would say is, Yes, if I had the Sony A7S, whatever, yeah, I'd be a low light killer, but I don't. And I shoot with the GH5s and the stabilization is just awesome. And it just means that I can get a lot more, what I consider usable shots. So visuals all done, Canon glass, um, GH5s, the drone, the DJI Mavic Pro, super old school, um, making sure to have a nice filter on there. Uh, it's basically sunglasses for your drone. If you don't have these, I've got three Polar Pros that I can switch between ND filters. Also having some ND for your particular cameras as well is going to be nice because if you're going to be doing weddings, you're probably going to be doing it outside and it's really just going to come in handy to be able to have some more flexibility and control. And then for portion three and editing, we will sum this up quickly. I mean, 
editing is going to obviously vary between everyone. And in a nutshell, I think music is going to be key. You really need to crush it on your music. And you really need to edit to the beat, but also, you know, don't overdo it. And I think the other key thing would be finding audio tracks that take your audience on a little bit of a roller coaster. It needs to be happy. It needs to be emotional. It needs to be happy. And then maybe kind of, you know, when it's ceremony time, you're kind of cooling down. It's romantic. It's romantic. And then you get to the party time and it's ramped up and you finish on a high note. These are just some things that I like to take into consideration when I'm editing and shooting my wedding videos. And overall, I hope that you found some of these kind of tactics, strategies, advice, you know, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, drop it in the comment section below. But this is more of just a talk to camera while having a little bit of the most recent wedding video playing side by side so that you could see kind of what the end result was and some of the tips and tricks that I kind of have uh, been implementing in my wedding flow. And, uh, you know, I just keep trying to get these videos better and better and learning one or two things every wedding, you know, how to get better audio, how to get better visuals, what might come my way, flying a, a drone in a no-fly zone or something like that, you never know. But overall, guys, it's Trey Lowell with Lowell Productions. I hope you found this video useful. If not, you can hit that dislike button. That's fine. But if you did like it, like and subscribe. As always, I will see you guys in the next video. And my children are going absolutely nuts upstairs. And so hopefully the lavalier wasn't picking up all that. But most likely it was. Hooray! <laughs> oh, I'm going to need some coffee.